with Tina and Zuki. And Dunko. And Dunko. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? My name is Tina and Zuki, and this is the station that's a home of fresh and classic hits. We are Pearl Radio 96.9. And me, my helper, has come. Ah, dee, 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 dee. Oh, sorry. Let me just give her a release for coming. Bona <laughs> Sifiwe. Her name is Teresa, but you know how Kenyans are? Teresa. <laughs> uh, t- look, look, j- imagine you're going to just have to tell us your name because Kenyans, Kenyans are strange. So go ahead. Go ahead and introduce yourself and let us know how are you? I'm very well, thank you. And you Tina. look so nice. Thank you. Unbelievable, Mike. Thank you so much. This, this lady doesn't age. <laughs> I don't understand. Can you tell us? Siri or Rambo, Ikoapi. Grace of God. Come on now, somebody. <laughs> but then you can check her out this morning. She is on, she, we are live on www.palradio.co.ke. And uh, we're just excited to have her. Well, you, tre- t- you know, Teresa, some people say Teresa, others say Teresa. So what do you want to go with? Teresa. Teresa. But be comfortable. Be comfortable. Teresa. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Kenyans, we found one. Mm. Teresa. Karibu sana to Pal Radio. Thank you. I know we connected a few years ago, but uh, maybe some people don't know your story and they're probably like, oh, she's got a story, we want to hear about it. And uh, I, I don't know, where, where should we go ahead and start with? Are you doing good? You're doing well? I'm well, thank you. <laughs> I'm very well, thank yes. you. I'm so honored and I'm so happy to be here oh, and to reconnect God. with you again. You're going to make me cry, girl. <laughs> You're going to make me cry. But listen, let's go ahead and start. We know you as um, the founder and the CEO of Clean Start Kenya. Mm-hmm. This dream, where was it born from? It was born in prison while I was serving a one-year sentence yes. as a first-time mom with my little daughter, three months old, at Langata Women Maximum Prison. Okay, you understand? You're saying this smiling. Yes. <laughs> now. Yeah, I now. Oh my God. Now. What, what, what year was this? Do you want to just track with us on the story? Yeah. What year was this? Yeah. So in 2011, mm-hmm. I was um, convicted on 4th of March, 2011. Okay. Uh, I had just been blessed with my firstborn daughter. Wow. And there we went, ro- riding in the Kenya prison bus. What had you done? Lanata. Good question. <laughs> Nothing. Okay, no, seriously. I'm so serious. I was not guilty mm-hmm. of what I got convicted for. Because a lot of people say, uh, everyone in prison says, Yes, and here I am with this same story. Are you allowed, <laughs> are you allowed to talk about the story? Yes. Okay, go ahead. So uh, I was a banker. I yes. worked in the banking sector mm-hmm. for a decade. Yes. And we paid out close to 10 million bob. Mm-hmm. And uh, the customer comes a month later and says, mm-hmm. no, mm-hmm. my no, 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 no. I'm missing 10 million shillings in my account. And we're like, no, but you, 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 you withdrew this cash. Yes. He says, no, I didn't. And so investigation started and about two and a half, three years later. Yes. After trying to really prove that I didn't. Yes. I end up being convicted. But the thing is, within those three years, you know, I was asked to bribe. I was asked to, cut, you know, meet the prosecutor and the arresting officer behind the scenes. Oh, wow. They also did tell me they knew that I hadn't committed this crime, but someone had to carry the cross on behalf of the bank. That's what the arresting officer said to me. And so they chose you? Literally, his words verbatim, you have been handpicked to carry the cross on behalf of the bank. It, yeah, crumbling bricks. Like <laughs> what? Yeah, it looked like a movie, like yes. a horror movie, actually. What? Yeah. What did this do to you at that particular time? You you just had a baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you, your husband? Did you call somebody? Who did you call him? Who was the first person you called and said this thing has gone south? My dad. Oh my god! I was so traumatized. I was so heartbroken. I was so numb. Mm-hmm. The trauma was too much, so I just went numb. It's like you're in a daze. You're like, this is not for real. I can imagine. Like, you know, I didn't do this. And you're going ahead with all this charade. Yeah. And so who's going to like vindicate me? So where do I go? These are the courts of mm. justice. Mm. It was so tough. So now sitting in prison is when I'm thinking, okay, I'll appeal. But you see, now when I'm in prison is when I'm meeting thousands of women who are also saying to me, mm-hmm. that's our criminal justice system. And I'm thinking, okay, so you don't get justice in courts so like reality started unfolding to me but when it was too late yes while i was in prison what did your father say to you 
I thank God so much for my dad because he said to me, we've got to stick with what is right. Wow. Uh, you know, and at that point when you're so confused mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you want to get out of this mess that you're finding yourself in, mm -hmm. you could easily waver. Yes. But he really was my rock mm -hmm. at that time. And he led as, you know, mm -hmm. the head of the family. And he said, we're going to do what is right. We're going to go through this. Yeah. And he said to me, this is very difficult. Yes. But stay focused. Uh, don't get swallowed by air, all the hula baloo. Right, right. Time will pass. You've been sentenced for a year, but we're going to get through this. You know, like stay focused and stay true to what is right. Not, not to mar or or or, or mess up his his reputation. But mm -hmm. your spouse at that time, yeah, was was there any help coming from that end as well? V very supportive. Okay. Very super duper supportive. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When the gavel fell mm -hmm. and you were or you were you had the chart the sentence, mm -hmm. um, what came to mind immediately? Did did you try plead because you had a child at that time? I did, and at that point, I was first as like, which country am I in? Oh, does Teresa. justice exist am yeah. i a kenyan hmm. does justice really exist mm -hmm. like you can go through the court system and you're innocent and still end up in prison so a lot of thoughts going through my mind mm -hmm. i felt silenced very very silenced because oh, yeah, anything i yeah, say yeah. didn't matter right um very let down by my country very very let down and um just wondering so what's 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 the future going to be like right. i've worked so hard at school worked so hard at work mm -hmm. you know being a, a, a law-abiding citizen yes and this is how i get paid back like so if you do right in this country it really doesn't matter mm -hmm. so i was better off paying bribes you know yeah, yes instead of yeah no wonder everyone is like you know how things operate in this country oh. you just pay some bribes and you get off the hook and so a lot of like confusion what mm -hmm. my parents have brought me up knowing yeah. mm. and now you know the reality i'm facing yes so a lot of confusion and then of course as a christian you're wondering okay where's so god where's this god <laughs> like his overall yeah he's a god of justice right i've prayed okay so man can fail mm -hmm. but so how is this god failing now i know and you've been a christian for how long at this time all like my this... life like 13 years at that point oh, man so i'm thinking okay so what's what's going on yes honestly yes. at some point i thought or i have died and now i'm in hell <laughs> so, you know like you try to make sense of what, what am i doing in this hell because prison is hell literally. yes mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm trying to make sense of uh, you know it's at that point mm -hmm. nothing is really making sense my goodness so act, it took me a whole three months in prison to start now like thinking straight do you have your baby with yes. you at this time she's with me trying i'm, I'm did, trying to breastfeed and it's so difficult did the thought of i need to leave my baby with somebody cross your mind no she was my life she was my hope she was the only thing that made sense to me at that point so i was going to cling on to her with everything i had so later on now that you're out would you have do you think maybe i should have left yeah. that bit you yeah yeah, yeah oh my yeah, gosh yeah, you know. so you're in prison mm -hmm. you've got a three-month-old baby with you mm -hmm. You found other women in there because you are Langata Women's Prison. Yeah. D you found them there with your children. With their what, children. What kind of talk or advice were they giving you at that time? Oh my goodness me. Like, just relax. Relax? Relax. Okay, we're in prison. Exactly. <laughs> relax. I'm here for 20 years. I'm here for 15 years. I'm here for life. I'm here on death row. You, you're just here. You're just here for a year. It will pass. I've done eight years. I'm thinking, what? My so my goodness. perspective starts changing like yes yes i won't die no this is doable i i'll come out of this place alive and it's a year we can do this and the women were so supportive i have never found community like i found community and genuine love like i found in prison today no you're serious I'm right now a hundred percent like vulnerable open no masks real life be is, is it because of, of the system? Is it because they're behind bars? Is it because, because they get broken when they're in there? What happens? You know, you've got nothing left. You've got nothing left. The only thing you have mm -hmm. is humanity. You know, out here, there's just so much we're crowding humanity with. Yes. My title, yeah. mm -hmm. where I live, mm -hmm. 
uh, what I eat, mm-hmm. where my kids go to school. There's yes. just so much hula baloo. Yeah. <laughs> but in prison, there's not, you've got nothing. We're all on the same level. Mm-hmm. So the only thing we could offer one another is love, mercy, grace, like humanness. Humanness. I love that. Humanness. And that's what I found in abundance. So you must have made friends. You must have made friends like real, real, and have you kept, real friends. Have you kept in touch with them till today? They're my community now. They're my community now. Who? What you see is what you get. Yes. There's not, nothing behind the scenes. And oh, yeah, go on. What, 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 what actually really struck me was, mm-hmm. you know, I came into prison thinking I shouldn't be here. I've been falsely accused. Mm-hmm. I need to get out of here. I don't, how, how am I going to survive with these criminals? Mm-hmm. <laughs> then I find a ha- the hundreds, literally. Yes. Like a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, mm-hmm. hundreds of women. Yes. Like me. Like you. In prison who shouldn't be there. I actually started feeling why did I judge before I even got to understand? And that's the thing. We judge before we even know the story. We come up with perceptions. Yeah. The more I got to learn their stories, yes. the more I felt so ashamed. Oh, Teresa, no. Because when I was getting in, I was like, I don't want any one of them to come near me. I don't want any one of them touching my daughter. And I'm like, my God, they've been through even worse mm. than I have been through. A woman has been trying all their life. Mm-hmm. So they missed a play. They did secondary school. They missed a spot to join higher learning. Yes. So they started making ends meet at that point. Well, me and a bunch of us got into higher learning and life has worked for us. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. woman has been trying to make ends meet with lack of opportunities over and over again. Wow. Got wow. into an abusive marriage. Mm-hmm. They're a victim of circumstances. Mm-hmm. And this is where they've ended up. Not like a criminal, but trying to make ends meet. You know, I felt so... Hundreds of them. Yes. Like I yes. would say 30% are the ones I would say literally deserved to be in prison for correction. Like you murdered, Mad- you yeah, stole, yeah. you went doing bad things to other people. Correct. You conspired to do those bad. You deserve 30%. to be here. You know, 30%. 70% of the, those ladies should not, should be, in not there. be there. This tells us a lot about the, the justice system in the nation. Mm-hmm. But uh, like uh, many of our listeners are in this morning, someone is wondering, you had a three-month-old daughter when you went in. So by the time you're leaving, your child was how old? She was almost a year because my sentence got reduced. And w- they're wondering what, how your daughter was affected mm. by your being imprisoned mm. and if that has continued to date. My name is Tina Nzuki and I love this lady. Her story of resilience, courage, and just does not want to give up completely. Uh, having served one year in jail with her three-month-old daughter for something she did not do and then gets out and instead of moping around life and saying, I'll kill all of you, I'll burn down your bank, she went ahead and built, uh, you know, she set in, she built an army of people that love people and therefore clean start began. So before we took the break, and oh yeah, f- pl- feel free to go ahead and text in uh, several people this morning who acknowledge you, Captain Manasse, uh, Lemayan, and uh, you know all of Kenya. These these wonderful people are on Pearl Radio. They just sent texts on zero 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 seven zero seven zero two nine six nine nine six nine. Any question for Teresa, she will absolutely oblige to answer. Before we took a break, we asked you your daughter, mm. the one year in prison. Mm. Did this affect her in any way to date? And what have you done about it? Yeah. So it's been a lot of concerted effort mm-hmm. to see to it that it doesn't affect her negatively. Because okay. it's a negative mm-hmm. and, you know, very uh, shameful and embarrassing situation. Mm-hmm. And especially for a young girl that's growing up, yes. it can really hit you on the negative direction. Yes. Yes. So one of the things I keep saying to her is the why the why i chose to do what's right right uh from her name oma she's called oma oma means truth ah. and i keep saying to her that she'll epitomize uh truth yes uh, and justice in her generation come on a lot of counseling a lot of you know you parent mm-hmm. very um 
how do I call it? very consciously yes uh, so that it doesn't affect her because her brother mm -hmm. who's now eight yeah. keeps saying to her so your first birthday you celebrated it in no, prison you grew no. up so you know asking her questions like how was it growing up in prison no. and I can imagine these are the same questions she'll get from her, her from yeah. her you know other colleagues at Correct. school yeah. so you know just explaining to her the why mm -hmm. uh, exposing her to the work I do and the yes. impact that it has yes. uh, even for other little children yeah Yes. Uh, who are growing up in prison, what we're trying to change. So basically painting the big picture mm -hmm. so that by the time, you know, she's a teenager yes. and this is coming her way, Correct. she's built, uh, you know, the, the, the resilient muscles. Okay. So I'm very um, conscious on how I parent her and how I prepare her yes. for what's coming ahead. Okay. But so far, mm -hmm. we're doing great. So Teresa, you leave prison mm. and you're back into society. Yeah. Who did you go see first? my parents <laughs> oh. did anyone the meet you as you're leaving the day yes 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 yeah. uh, my, my my family actually yes. was there yeah. a few friends from yes. you know that i for my colleagues in the <laughs> banking sector mm -hmm. uh but you know it's funny you ask ten, yeah. looking back now 10 years how i was running when that oh. gate opened oh. and just looking like is anyone coming back to, for me? to stop you from yeah, going to take me back <laughs> Like, you know, and the way I just, you know, they want to run to me and they're happy. And ah. me, I'm thinking, let's go, let's go, start the car. Oh, man. Let's I, I would run and leave a, a, a burning <laughs> prison. Burn it. Yeah. Well, well. So you get out, you see your family first. Yeah. How did you settle back in? It wasn't easy. No? It wasn't easy. The stigma was too much. Oh, yeah. Too much. Mm -hmm. I think uh, to date, I can see, mm -hmm. you know, people really do not know how to handle or deal with people coming out of prisons. You know, to date? the fear. Yeah, you think? yeah, the fear mm -hmm. um, that, you know, people have got these narratives. Uh, the, it's the criminalization of that space. Yes. So people don't want really much to do with you. For me, it's turned around. Right. But I can still see it happening for a lot of individuals coming out of prisons. But the stigma was too much. Can't get a certificate of good conduct at that time. Uh, you can't get a job. You know, you're so broke. You're Why in is the it minor. so hard? Um, it, you know, there are no structures. In there place? No, in place. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there, there are no structures. These, it's 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 like an afterthought. Oh, you're there. People coming out of prisons. Oh, you people are there. And whose job is it to set the structures in place? Uh, the the it, it falls under the Ministry of Interior and Coordination. Correct. That's the mother. Uh, the uh, mother ministry. ministry. Yeah, the mother ministry. Yeah, that that but, needs to take care of that. But, but now it's people have, like you exactly who are, are doing, doing that. It. Yeah, yeah. Because there's nothing, absolutely nothing. You come out of prison, you're on your own. How you'll start and begin life, you're on your own. So because of what we've been through, mm -hmm. so those are the kind of things now we do. You know, hold yeah. your hand when you're leaving prison. Yes. Ensure that you know you've got food, you've got a place to stay. Right. Because honestly speaking, if you've got nothing like you're going back in you're going to the streets right what do right. You, you expect of this person who has no food no place to stay correct sleeping on the outs uh, outside mm -hmm. they'll definitely try and steal something to 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 feed themselves surely but you you say this and someone who has read your story or is paying attention or watching on internet on internet right now it's probably going like but this lady who left prison and this one we're looking at now uh, there's this gap here. How did she get from here to here? Mm. Uh, because now you're the, you're the CEO and founder of yeah. Clean Start. Yeah. So now we are out. Mm -hmm. We've made it out of prison. Yay, thank God. Yeah. After one year. Mm -hmm. uh, were the wardens nice to you? Did you make they good were. friends with her? Oh with my them? goodness, they were. Yay. And it's, 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 it was all purpose. You know, we, we had amazing relationships with mm -hmm. the wardens, taking care of my daughter, taking care of the other children, uh, taking good care of me. Yes. Um Little did I know that I would be coming back for us to continue on that journey. I thought Hiya. it's Napitia too, uh -uh. but <laughs> they were kind. Too. It they was not good. a pito. Mm -mm. It was a, you know, people, I know the Bible says this too shall come to pass. I tell people it shall come to pass. It did not come to stay. Mm -hmm. um, but I thank God you went through what you went through. Yeah. So now mm -hmm. you're out. Mm -hmm. Where in the world did you get the idea for Clean Start? So the idea, you know, after leaving prison, you know, it's, one thing when you leave, you get freedom from a pit, you know, where you're yeah. all locked up and you, you've left. Yes. You kind of feel goodness. What about those? It's, it's, the taste isn't good when you remember all those Are you, you left, left behind. Yes, yes. Like I wish you could also experience that freedom and that, Correct. and the justice that I have experienced. Mm -hmm. So I had it in my mind that one day when one I day. have rebuilt my life. Yes. Someday I'll go back 
and support them and one was, way or the other but i really didn't know what form that would be for and me yeah. it was you know how you think of csr yes you know, i thought yeah, it yes, would be my CSR. Be CSR. yes yes and how how difficult was that the rebuilding part because oh now you've come back home w- were you allowing people wow. to visit you wow were people coming and taking selfies they look at you you know oh my goodness me it, it was, was hard 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 you know i'd lock myself in my room oh my gosh or Tina. move you know i thought prison was tough rebuilding from zero you know you you, you you've built a life right. you've built a career a right. name yes and now you're coming back to rebuild from shame finger pointing see you knew lali kwajela you're literally a beggar like to move from one point to another either someone has to drop you or to offer you bus fare or to food you're at the 100% dependent like i need food yani you, you've been so incapacitated and you know what makes it even more difficult is mm. because you know i don't deserve this no. i had worked so hard to build my life it's right. all been washed away right literally mm-hmm. it's not like i can knock on any door to get a job because everyone is like uh, your cv certificate of good conduct right. how do you start explaining i'm from prison yes no one even wants you anywhere near, near them <gasps> It was hard. Was the same for your daughter? Like, would she try and make friends and everyone is like, You've come yeah. from prison with your mom. It's what even was, her. She you was know, just a baby. But you see, she's grown up into a world of scarcity. So I even understand. her own socializing, okay. mm-hmm. like sharing. Yes. Like there's plenty. You know, she'd even grab, you know, food comes on the table and she just starts you know what she had learned and seen mm-hmm. in prison mm-hmm. so you're you're teaching her afresh correct that the world operates in abundance and you know it's not the scarcity that she right. grew up in right in prison mm-hmm. so and and I, I i can imagine it's the same for her because it's a whole different journey for her yes it wasn't her crime it wasn't like what is this my mom got me into mm-hmm. you know it's a know. whole yeah. different journey for her yes. compared to me when you can imagine it's a whole generation of children who accompany their mothers to prison so so mommy is here she's trying to get past the stigma of watus mm-hmm. uh, the the child is also trying to get past the stigma of the kids pointing at her exactly who held your hand at this time this is when now you say nataka yeah. kutuma uh, you know to somebody yeah. who yeah. who held your hand and said listen yeah. let's take your lesson mm-hmm. and turn it into something my mom and ah. my dad thank god for parents and my siblings thank, thank god, god for siblings for family yes thank, thank god, god for family. family okay they were there for me every single day of that journey mm-hmm. and when i looked for job and couldn't find they were very patient with me and i finally came and said you know what i want to start an organization mm. that will support all these women that i've met along this journey but also where i can also find myself and they said to me we will support you if that's what you want to do that phrase where i can also find myself yeah where you lost at one point yes i was what self were you looking for the tr- teresa before or the one that you thought should have been before the this incident happened tina was just looking for meaning meaning of life mm-hmm. meaning of all that had happened to me what was this all about that's all i wanted to figure out because i couldn't go back that was so clear that bridge has been banned and banned completely i wow. couldn't go back i couldn't go back i couldn't even try to recreate mm-hmm. what i had envisioned for myself and my life that had been banned completely so i needed a new vision i needed to make a new meaning of life right and that's what i was really deeply searching for mm-hmm. and for god to just make it clear for me and all i decided was set up this organization yes step by step as i support the other women hopefully find myself and find meaning and is this where clean start began yes why did you call it clean start precisely to give myself a clean start but also to offer millions of other clean starts mm-hmm. to other people who are in the same situation that I was in you know Teresa they say what good thing can come out of jail yes it's seated right here oh, wow. <laughs> yeah it's seated right here 
You want to give us a glimpse of um, Clean Start? What was the year you started? 2015. Mm -hmm. I registered Clean Start legally. And... <laughs> Kiara, Kiara is listening. They're like, aha! No. No. It's okay. We are it's in okay. good books oh, with Kiara. Come on now, I people. Thank God we pay all our taxes. <laughs> we are clean. <laughs> audited accounts. Everything is perfect. I love it. So love I'm grateful it. for that. Yes. And... um we start we we held our fat, first meeting mm -hmm. at Uhuru Park. At Uhuru Park. At Uhuru Park. Who did you host? The women. So I'd call the women. Mm -hmm. I'd call strategists. These who had left jail. Yes. Okay. They'd been released. So. Yeah. Okay. And a few friends who I knew would listen to the plan and the vision. Mm -hmm. And I said, we don't have we have zero shillings but we have a vision. All right. We're going to restore our lives with dignity, with esteem, with Love hope. It. Yes. We're going to find meaningful work mm. for you. We're going to live a successful and victorious life. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have a clean start. And the organization is called Clean Start. Of course, the first day, the women were like, my goodness, what are you talking about? Oh. We don't even have bus fare to go back home. But that's where we started. And I, I told them this will be our spot. We'll be meeting here. Yeah. We'll be having our meetings here. Yes. We'll strategize here. And we started. Right. And we started with the faith-based organizations because that was the easiest mm -hmm. place. So we'd go give our talks, explain what our experiences were like in prison and mm -hmm. the kind of support that we would require. And we find support. Yeah. But that what's so funny is that the first office we held along Koinange Street mm -hmm was donated by a church member who had our story one day when we were sharing. Oh, beautiful. And we got our first office along Koinange Street. God bless Maxwell Kihara. Hi, graphic. Maxwell Kihara. Uh, yes. <laughs> we had yeah. our first office. We had our laptops. And the organization started growing. Right. And um, within two years yes. of being at that office, mm -hmm. we had institutional funding, we had individual trust funding. Mm -hmm. The funding started coming and you know what? Mm -hmm. We'd go into prisons, give hope to women, uh, prepare them, train them yes. for life post-imprisonment. Started looking for jobs and speaking to the corporates about why they should care about people who are coming out of prisons and right. offering them jobs. Um, and that's one arm of Clean Start. So like service delivery to service those who are delivery. impacted. Yes. But then there's a second arm of systemic change because as long as we do not reform our systems, the process continues. They'll still go get the next innocent person. That sounds, and, that sounds very hard. You know, it's to do. very hard and it's long term. We know this is for the long term term because you can mm -hmm. imagine tina these systems have been in existence for 50 plus years we mm. inherited this from the brits when we gained our independence oh the british let me tell you something about them so we've got yeah. a lot of colonial era mm -hmm. laws yes. and systems and way of operating even mm -hmm. the way our prisons rehabilitate and so on and so forth yes it's a long shot to overhaul the system. There's a way Ooh. the police operate, there's a way the judges operate mm -hmm. and magistrates. But you but you see we we're seeing a lot of change. Yes. I mean, the first woman uh chief justice. Yes. Honorable Martha Kome. Yes. You know there's a lot of goodwill happening, there's a lot of change that's happening. So we're hopeful. Even though we're in this for mm -hmm. the long haul, yeah. but we're hopeful. You know, I hear a lot about the women. But I have a question. Mm -hmm. What happens to children yes. of ex prisoners? Yeah. What happens to them, especially those mm. that not only were birthed in the prison, mm. but also grew up and matured in the prison? Yeah. If you have a program for them, we would love to hear about it. Yeah. Uh, in just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Teresa, Clean Start. Mm -hmm. Found and see of Clean Start. Yeah. I hear more about the women. Yeah. But what about the children? Yeah. The ones that leave prison with their mothers, mm -hmm. the ones that come out as teens. Yes. Or maybe as children, or maybe even as pre adults. Mm. What about them? So we have a program specifically for these children. Right. Because 90% of women who are in prisons mm -hmm. are mothers mm -hmm. and single and sole breadwinners of their children. Okay. So when mom is in prison, there's no one else mm -hmm. taking care of this child other than mom. Okay. So 
we train first the mom on right. how to take care of the child. Right. We also, in this program, make sure that this child has nutrition, education, early childhood development is taking place while this child is in prison because yeah. the first a thousand years form the foundation yeah. of a human being. How, how difficult is this? Especially with children that are um, children that are being raised by women that were in prison and the children themselves were in prison. What kind of challenges have you had so the putting the system in place? Mom is traumatized. Oh gosh. Mm. And she's dealing with her own issues and yet she's got to take care of this little young child or children or even. children in yeah. prison literally yeah or is in prison with one child and has left two on their own on, on the outside yeah remember she's the sole breadwinner bread mm -hmm. and she's been caught up in a mess trying to fend for these children or protect these children there you go and now you're telling her focus we need to take care of this child because after the first a thousand days of this child the foundation has been formed okay so we must focus and make the best of this time yes yes it's really tough secondly mm. prison is a controlled environment all you right. don't walk in and out with all the luxury that you are their rules their regulations have to be followed exactly yes so you can't bring every other thing in prison mm -hmm. thirdly it's very under resourced okay very very under resourced so you're making the best out of very little so the bare minimum is is what is available for you i tell you so la we are talking lack of what essentials lack of like diapers so lack of soap lack of Toothpaste, vaseline yeah. lack of even water sometimes is a challenge let me tell you our prisons need a lot of support from government from the corporate sector from individuals faith-based organizations why do i say that because they are on the receiving end mm. of a broken system i mean i have a warrant i must admit this woman and the child but i don't have enough bed space i don't have enough resources to take care of them teresa in the time when you're in prison you didn't think of prison break you rem you remember <laughs> i mean didn't you just think blow a hole in this wall let's get some ropes and pull down oh that green don't even dare <laughs> the guns all over the, I know. oh my word I'm, for I'm, every, I'm just kidding for every but, woman there are like three four five wardens around wow. i don't even dare wow it's tough it's it, it it does something on your mind so your system does cater for children as well yes we do okay uh, and we've gotten a lot of support to cater for the children to support right. them while they're still in prison mm -hmm. to prepare them for life on the outside then remember mm -hmm. tina mm -hmm. there are some children who will have to leave prison and leave mama behind still serving that their, their time because they're only allowed to be in prison up to the age of four years so once the child is four and your prison sentence was 10 20 whatever years this child has now to walk out of those bars into a world they have never even imagined of what if there's nobody on the outside to receive this child where does this child go welfare in most cases there's no one so what we do is we look for the matano matano grandmother wherever it is they are Ooh try and locate them and take this child there but we try as much as possible not to institutionalize the child again and even if mm -hmm. they'll be institutionalized in a children's home or mm. in a home where you know they take care of children yeah. we'll try and make sure it's not for a very long time, time. so yes. that they can start living a normal life, life. outside of a yes. controlled institution System. yes yeah 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 so we're wow. always on the lookout for support with dignity packs for the children mm -hmm. uh uh, essential such as foodstuffs. The right. good thing with prisons, they've got an open door policy. Okay. They say to clean start, if you can find food stuff for the children, unga, dengu, rice, yes. bring. We yes. will cook for the children. The child has no has Anna no Makosa. Anna Makosa uh, uh. So we are always on the lookout for 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 food stuff, for diapers, for yes. whatever it is we can find. And then we've partnered with people like Kenya Pediatric Association, thanks yes. to Dr. Angela Migoa, ah. Dr. Susan Wamithi. So there are visits that yes, are done. Exactly. This is beautiful. Yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. actually hope. So we're looking now beyond the bars. Mm -hmm. Social skills. Yes. Some of them may be forgotten while in prison. Yeah. How do you reintroduce them so we, we start we start that process while still in prison so you've okay. got like three months mm -hmm. towards your being released from prison right you'll be surprised that most of these women are actually sad because she's thinking when i leave where am i going we did our yeah but yes. you know we hold their hands and start giving them the skills 
training them and preparing them. We've got a program called the Ufunuo program. Oh, come on So now. that's a revelation. Aye. We're trying to reveal to you yes. an amazing vision ahead for you. Okay. Life has not come to an end. There's an amazing, beautiful life yes. post these bars. And yes. we'll hold your hands you know, post-imprisonment. Yeah. And so what we do is Ufunuo program now, eight weeks, they go through this program. It's it's got pro, it, the curriculum has, you know, visioning, right. forgiveness, right. Uh, uh, your story. You've got to control your story, your mm -hmm. narrative, mm -hmm. be, be, before you're given other narratives. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know the eight curric the eight courses in that Ufunuo program. Then on the day of release. There's a woman at the gate yes. waiting mm -hmm. for you because again, a lot of these women have no one coming to pick them on their day of release. Yes, you will find a clean start woman waiting for you oh, at the gate. Beautiful. We'll go with you to the supermarket, mm -hmm. pick unga, pick you know milk, mm -hmm. whatever you will need for the week mm -hmm. uh, before you you know start figuring out where will my food be food coming come, from. Yes. So we shop, mm -hmm. take you. Where is it we can take you? You know, we've already worked that out. Yes. Settle you in and then journey with you. I love that. In mm -hmm. what we call circles of healing. Mm -hmm. And then once you're, you've been through the circles of healing for about three to six months, we'll support you start a business. So right. we give every woman 15,000 bob this year alone, 2021. What? Yes. We've supported 87 women this year. Please watch out to Kupatia release. Ate? Come yes. on now, that's what I'm talking about. To start your own business. Right, so we'll get, right. You know, the stock, it could be your selling clothes, it could be a, a green grocer, it could be a beauty space, oh. you know, but we'll make sure that you've got a decent means of livelihood. Now, yeah. yeah. Now, do you go to, to all, I mean, to most prisons around the country or yeah, do you focus on only one? No, we're in, first and foremost, we're working in 17 counties out of the 47. Good we stuff. We hope that we can get you know across the country yes and we our our programs are in depth in 23 women prisons mm -hmm. out of the 43 so we still have 20 more women prisons to go to yes we need each and everyone's hands on the deck yeah to all support, hands on deck this yeah, is good yeah to support these women begin afresh C can we talk about how nations began to open doors for you we're talking with Teresa this morning she is a CEO and founder of clean start yeah. and uh, a woman who my god you are so strong Th there's some messages coming in this morning gotta read them for you uh, before we go on uh, someone says this morning wow I'm amazed by your story this is Martin the psalmist uh, Teresa you're a strong and resilient woman I applaud your will I'm holding and holding on to hope mm -hmm. and how you're building such amazing structures to accommodate others from that are coming from the same background mm -hmm. uh, this is a very inspirational story will encourage many more to come out better mm -hmm. and not bitter from any predicament in life they find themselves in mm -hmm. uh, Ken Munio yes we're definitely working on this Sawa Sawa uh, he's asking if we can get uh, this story out okay. uh, then Mark says eh lakini kuna watu strong mimi I can't do I'll come out to do what they accuse me of chaukweli <laughs> You see, that's what I'm talking about right there. Uh, but we we are loving this. Uh, let's see who else this morning. Uh, well, kunetu ingini wamepoteza stima, lakini watakuwa sawa. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. there were women in prison who say to me, you've come here to serve a one-year sentence. Innocent. Yes. Why don't you just now commit the yeah, crime? Yeah, the, uh, the crime that, that they, they yeah. accused you of. Mm -hmm. but, um, and to which you responded? Oh my goodness me. <laughs> you, you've always, let me tell you, yeah. Tina, when you know your value system, yes. what do you stand for? Come on now. It helps you make your decisions. Quickly, all chop, the chop. time. Yes, because you already know my value system. Yes. And so decision making becomes very easy because life mm -hmm. will always throw things at you core values core values those are important that's what helps you Let, let's talk about how god opened doors for you oh internationally word. yes so how did that happen my goodness I and why wasn't i your hand by the bear <laughs> you how it happened is mm -hmm. that i was invited to the ted women hey conference please i release for the ted talker hey. Hey. welcome to our ted talk uh -huh. as a speaker did that kind of just you went like that's excuse me what 
Yeah, of course, I was like, me, <laughs> Ted? What yes. are you talking about? Yeah. Because I had al- always watched inspiring stories on the Ted, Ted Women platform yes, in correct. the US. Correct. And so I was like, my goodness, so I'm going to be on this Ted. Oh, my shiva. <laughs> and I'm like, why? What? What? Yes. But I must say, I yes. must confess, yeah. I was like, oh, my goodness, babe, I'm going to be talking about criminalization and prison. Mm. I wish I was going to talk about those justice, are, no. uh, climate change. Let me and, tell you, you those know, Americans love those stories. <laughs> they love stories of Siju flies on ice. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you have been imprisoned. <laughs> oh, CG, you, your CG hands. Yeah. Ah. Yes. But mm-hmm. the TED Women Conference yes. opened the world for Clean Start, literally. Come on now. Immediately I did that TED Women, and I'm so grateful. 1.4 million people have watched the TED Talk. Yes. From that moment on, the UK, different... Um, states in the right. US in the US and different parts of Africa yes started inviting me come and on that's how we built our fundraising platform Ooh. but also our yes our story got got known and yes. the support came along I love and this. you know the exposure that right. I've gotten from this I'm mm-hmm. actually writing a book yeah this finally. is me I was about to ask her, where's your book <laughs> we need to sell your book finally. You gotta, it's, yeah. it's on the way it's on the way okay um, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yes yes, yes. yes. <laughs> it's quite a process oh. and a lot of discipline but yes, i'm getting yes. it done uh-huh. and um just meeting people from different kinds of work we're mm-hmm. now in touch with the un women look at that um different organizations that. in new york yes uh, that are you know pro justice yes. and women empowerment yeah. it's just opened a whole new world literally the yes. globe has opened up so apart from fans coming in from these yeah. groups and yeah. societies and organizations that you've been before mm-hmm. what else are they doing for clean start and for the women of kenya at least um a lot of network networks connections policy formulation uh, so other than the cash support that nice. we get in nice. funding mm-hmm. there's a lot of support when it comes to research right because research is huge mm-hmm. so we are, we've partnered with the universities such as university of backbeck oh, uh, you stuff. know different organizations in the us canada and other and other parts of the world yes. so there's research data collection uh, there's policy and legislation formulation right. which we couldn't have been able to do by ourselves is is there anyone who's uh, emulating or who has adopted your 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 clean start um framework and and taking that for another nation for example do you have clean start kigali do you have clean start kampala i'm so glad you asked that am i question. prophesying Shanda. yes we <laughs> so what has happened is yes. that clean start has bathed the coalition of formerly imprisoned women africa ate africa please one more ariris <laughs> One, it's called the coalition of formerly imprisoned women africa africa because what we realize is yes. that this is not just happening in kenya it's no. happening in uganda oh yeah in rwanda yeah. in south africa mm-hmm. and what birthed this was right. women serving sentences in kenya from different parts of africa so she goes hey. back home in south africa and she's like i want to continue the work that, that I found in Kenya, Kenya but now in, in South, South Africa. Africa. Yes. And that's how we formed this coalition. And uh, my goodness. I'm so proud yes, of you. Not Africa. This work, <sighs> the same module right. in Kenya mm-hmm. is now transforming in other parts of Africa. It's so, I, I never yeah. imagined. Yeah this do you sleep better at night now yes i do <laughs> and you know what i'd like to yeah. say to anyone yeah. whatever it is you're going through don't take shortcuts don't take shortcuts don't mm-hmm. take shortcuts mm-hmm. go through the course it at the end of that tunnel right what is waiting for you mm-hmm. is the world is the world that wound that you're going through today right let's turn it into wisdom right and let's turn it into wealth once we've got the wisdom what do you need from us this morning support in terms of oh my goodness may the women in prisons do not have sanitary towels as we sit today because of covid19 pandemic Mm -hmm. prisons got shut to protect the imprisoned not to get the virus yeah yeah so what that has what that bathed is that people well wishers Mm. are no longer going into prisons as they used to correct so we are can't they not send stuff though so from who you know so if anyone is listening out there and you could help us access, say, 2,000, 3,000 mm-hmm. packs of sanitary towels. Our offices are at, in Westlands, mm-hmm. a school lane, very close to Sarit Center. Mm-hmm. But you could also check out our website, Clean Start Kenya, mm-hmm. 
www.dr.org. <laughs> All our contacts are on there. Yeah. We're all, we are on all social media platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, right. Clean Start. Clean Start. Kenya, mm. you'll get us there. Mm. Let's see how, A, urgently we could get sanitary, sanitary towels, towels yeah. into the women prisons. Okay. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the most urgent thing I see that we could do easily. Easily. And sanitary towels comes with panties and yes. you know, toothbrushes oh, yes. and you know yes. all those other dignities. So what about the babies? So uh, the babies, yeah. it's food stuff. Mm -hmm. Any dry food stuff. Dry food. Dry food okay. stuff. You know, porridge flour, ugali flour, mm -hmm. whatever dry food stuff. Yes. Uh, and then of course, whatever we need to take care of a baby like yeah. uh, Vaseline, yes. soap, uh, diapers, yes. you know, whatever a baby needs, we're allowed to take that into the prisons. So that's mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Secondly, yes. we need mentors. If you can mentor yeah. someone who's in point A and wants to point to get to point B, yes, we, we need you to, to, we need you to come and join our, our, our network. What qualifies a mentor for Clean Start? Because so you're these at are, a good this place. is a vulnerable group of people. Exactly. That, la, 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 that yeah. word. Yes. Yeah. You don't just want any Tom, Dick, and Waidera uh -uh. to show up. Exactly. And be a men and be a tormentor, yeah. not a mentor. You know. Eh. So as you've said rightfully, mm -hmm. you're not coming to judge this woman because she's she's going she's broken. Right. And she's vulnerable. Right. So you're at a good place as an individual. Mm -hmm. You know. You're not coming to ride on someone's brokenness correct you're at a good yes. place yes and you are willing to hold someone who's broken yes from point a and yes. they want to get to point b yes and you can hold them and take them through that process mm -hmm. until they are whole and fully healed come on now. and we will Ooh. show you and guide you yes. on how to do it we need mentors because every every two months right. we're graduating 20 women yes and you see these women need someone to continue holding their hands yeah so we don't have enough capacity mm -hmm. to continue holding the hands of these women so if you're out there you're a counselor you know you're a counselor a mentor yes, yes. and you can support in mm -hmm. that way you're welcome yes sadly we're always in need of some cash yes always Besha. yes yes our pay <laughs> bill number five I, I could send it to you. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Is there a place we can find it on your website? Yes, or on where? our website. Yes. On our uh, uh, Facebook yes. uh, channels. You'll find that. Go to cleanstartkenya.org. That's yes. cleanstartkenya.org yeah. and find out how you can help them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are some of the ways Man. that, you know, someone could plug in mm -hmm. and support to turn around uh, someone's life. Teresa, we, we, we're going to make a very short, quick prayer for you because we're a praying station. Shanda somebody. Uh, you're you. listening this morning to Teresa Njoroge, and she is the CEO and founder of Clean Start Kenya mm -hmm. organization, which is an organization that I, I, may I call it loves on, on women that have been in prison and their children and families and giving them a brand new start. Mm -hmm. Father, we just want to thank you so much for Teresa Njoroge. Thank you because the Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of God. Mm -hmm. Her steps today are being ordered of you towards people that have no 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 hope at all but you have caused her to be a light she is salt she is flavoring everywhere she's going mm -hmm. she's a light she cannot be hidden mm -hmm. so this morning we ask for favor favor from the government favor from governments favor from organizations uh, listening to us this morning favor from individuals that will join with this amazing wonderful so sweet-hearted woman that just wants to help everybody else lord remember the women and men in prison yes. and and their children we ask in the name of jesus justice comes from the lord let it be done today in the name of jesus let your will be done in their lives as it is in heaven and for clean start give them everything they need to make it a wonderful organization that's gonna move from here into the ends of the world and in this last days may Teresa njoroge teresa njoroge may she shine as a star may you use her mightily cause her to be a battle axe in this war that the enemy is trying to steal minds and wreck families and ruin individuals let her come out champion and victor to the glory and honor of your precious name in jesus name we pray amen and amen, amen. amen. Woo! thank you hallelujah god bless the offering basket will come round now you amen. can go ahead <laughs> This has been amazing. Thank you. God bless you. I've loved it. Woo! Hallelujah. Join Tina and Zuki and Danko on Peril in the Morning. Weekdays from 5.30 a.m. to 10 a.m.